This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today. A man is in hospital following a hazardous chemical spill in Dunedin this morning. A Dunedin self-defence tutor is sharing her knowledge with a group of Dunedin's Muslim women. And fresh from two years travelling in the Netherlands, Dunedin-based art collective Ikare is returning to its home city. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Fire crews have cleaned up a chemical spill in South Dunedin this morning, which resulted in one person being taken to hospital. The spill happened at PBT Transport Depot in Strathallan Street, with emergency services evacuating and ventilating the building. The chemical is a concentrated and highly corrosive acid which an employee inhaled. Getting rid of toxic chemicals at PBT Transport Depot in Strathallan Street this morning after a spill of a concentrated and highly corrosive acid. Two firefighters wearing level 4 hazmat suits seen here emptying a bucket of nitric acid into a large yellow container outside the warehouse. Because there were multiple uh, chemicals in that area, we always go to the highest um, level of protection, so that's why it's a hazmat response here. One person was taken to Dunedin Hospital in a moderate condition as a result of inhaling the fumes. The person's understood to be a manager at PBT Transport and will recover quickly and without lasting damage. Workers were earlier evacuated from the depot and the busy South Dunedin Street was closed in a major response from emergency services. The building's evacuated, the office and all the workshop and uh, it's mostly storage units around it so it's all been evacuated. Firefighters used absorbing agents to clean up the spill after a box containing the acid was breached. Uh, no, I'm not sure what the mechanism was, um, a worker found that a container had uh, been split. Otago University chemistry professor Lyle Hanton was called in to help firefighters after almost three litres of the chemical was spilled in Dunedin, the south today. Further south, five fire crews are battling a serious house fire near Milton this afternoon. A Fire and Emergency New Zealand spokesman says crews from Milton, Lawrence, Waitahuna and Balclutha are at the scene. The single-storey dwelling is on the Manuka Gorge Highway near Glenore. All the occupants are safe and well, but the house was said to be well ablaze. A Dunedin self-defence tutor is sharing her knowledge with a group of Dunedin's Muslim women. The aim is to build the women's confidence and the skills to protect themselves. It's moves like these which Dunedin self-defence tutor Belle Murphy has been sharing with women for over six years. Now she's passing on her knowledge to women from Dunedin's Muslim community. How to repel someone trying to remove a hijab is part of the program, but she says this is only one side of the equation. Self-defence programs are only ever going to be one piece of the puzzle when it comes towards ending violence um, and ending gendered violence in particular. We need support for survivors, we need prevention happening with people of all genders, um, active bystander education, um, systemic change, uh, it's, a, it's a big it's a big issue. Murphy's part of the self-defence network Wahine Toa and also runs courses in schools for girls. She's keen to pass on the confidence gained from a program she did many years ago. Uh, and thankfully I never needed to use those techniques that I learnt, but knowing that I had them in my back pocket and having had that experience of seeing that, yes indeed, I can actually kick really hard and I can punch really hard, hard enough to break a nose if I need to, um, knowing that gave me that confidence to be able to move through the world and live my best life a bit more easily. This recent demonstration at the USA was particularly noisy. Yeah, awesome. Murphy says assertive volume is a big advantage when trying to repel an attacker. Your voice is one of your most powerful weapons. Right? So finding the time and the space to practice your big, loud, angry yells is good for the soul, um, and it also happens to be you know, em empirically proven as one of the more effective forms of resistance. For forceful verbal and forceful physical resistance increase our chances of escaping from uh, an, an assault. She says New Zealand's domestic violence statistics confirm what educators and academics have known for years. The stranger danger message is largely outdated. We get a lot of advice in girls about, um, you know, don't talk to strangers or don't walk alone at night and all these kinds of things. But unfortunately, in Aotearoa, we are safer on the street at night than we are in our homes 
during the day. So having some real talk about ways we can recognize warning signs and relationships and where to find support, as well as skills for how to support others. Murphy mostly run courses for women out of the OUSA's clubs and societies building. She has a special rainbow event set for later this month for anyone across the LGBTQI spectrum. In Dunedin, the South Today. Queenstown is set to play a big role in the world's most expensive television series. Industry sources say New Zealand has been confirmed as a primary location for the $1.5 billion production of the Lord of the Rings series. The country nearly lost out on the hugely lucrative deal to Scotland. According to the film Industry Insider, the government provided reassurance to Amazon after the Christchurch terrorist attacks that New Zealand was still a safe place to film the series. He certain Queenstown will play a big role in the production. So to come on the South today. A foreign man tries to escape a drink driving charge at Queenstown Airport and the popularity of poultry shows is on the rise around the South. Welcome back. A foreign national charged with drink driving has allegedly tried to do a runner overseas. Queenstown police say a 20-year-old male who'd been living in Queenstown was processed for drink driving after a minor car crash on Ballarat Street on Sunday. He recorded 951 micrograms and was charged with drink driving and driving while forbidden. The man was set to appear in the Queenstown District Court yesterday, but police found him at the airport where he was boarding a flight to Auckland. Police say he was planning to travel to Singapore. He was arrested for breaching of bail and will appear in court at a future date. The hobby of bird breeding is growing in popularity if the thousand plus entries in last weekend's annual Christchurch poultry show are anything to go by. But as the breeder who won best bird in the show reveals, there's a fair amount of work behind the scenes to create a prize winning bird. Over a thousand different birds on display. This year's annual Christchurch Poultry Pigeon and Bantam Show featured all sorts of breeds, each carefully reared and groomed before the competition. Breeder Brian Dunlop won this year's Best in Show and is an old hand at looking after his prize winning bantams. This includes keeping them indoors for several months before the event to avoid foot feathers getting dirty or breaking and then there's the feeding and grooming to consider. They've got to be on a good, what I call my show diet, which of course I can't say too much what that is because everyone might get onto it, but again, they're really well fed, it's just a very good weight, and of course with, with the, when we shampoo them, you've got to be careful you don't overwash them, but I shampoo them like, say a couple of times within that season, yep, which just give them a good old wash up and a dry, and the secret is dry them slowly, the slower you dry them the better, which they seem to, seems to really help. Each type of bird has unique traits which can show up in breeding. For instance, the objective with peak and bantams is to have them coloured deep black with a green sheen. The girls are really good. The boys have a bit of white in them, unfortunately, under, under colour. Yeah. They tend to do that's just the nature of the beast. If you want really good females, you've got to have a male with a bit of white under colour. Otherwise, uh, yeah, if you get a dark male, then you don't get the good females. So that's just how you've... How, it's, how you've got to do it. The Christchurch show has been running for over 150 years and Judge John Taylor says they're still seeing new people bringing their birds along. There's a lot of new younger exhibitors um, well yeah around Christchurch in general um, that have sort of gone out to those smaller towns and uh, after the earthquakes and things and worked out that they can have a few chooks and, and then once you get a few chooks you can work out that you can show them and it seems to be working in our favour so it's um, really good. And he says just about anyone can take up the hobby of breeding domesticated birds. As I always say to people, even right in the middle of Christchurch here, we used to have a few exhibitors that, that only had female birds, of course, but, yep. and they always did really well at shows. There's, there's no reason why in the middle of big cities you can't have a couple of chooks and bring them to a show. After several years of declining numbers, this year's show is the third in a row. The club has topped over a thousand entries. In Christchurch, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, we learn about our recent Red Southern Sunrises and we hear from the Dunedin based art collective returning to its home city.
welcome back. A rescue helicopter is on the way to the scene of a van crash near Kingston where firefighters are working to free a person trapped by their legs. Police say emergency services headed to the crash on Kingston Road shortly after 3.30. A fire and emergency New Zealand spokesperson says a van has crashed into a tree and one person is trapped. Fire crews from Kingston and Frankton are at the scene and starting to extricate the person from the van while a crew from Queenstown was on its way. Early risers across the south were treated to a spectacular deep red sunrise yesterday morning. Workers at Port Otago were able to enjoy the phenomenon as they loaded and unloaded containers onto Rio de la Plata. A red sunrise is caused by Rayleigh scattering in which most of the blue light is scattered away as it travels through Earth's troposphere about 6 to 10 kilometres above the ground. A particularly dry and clear troposphere helps intensify the red colour. Fresh from two years travelling in the Netherlands, Dunedin-based art collective E. Kare is returning to its home city. It's collaborating with Otago Polytechnic to bring an innovative new show. Showing off a small sample of what's on offer at a new exhibition by Dunedin-based art collective Ikare. The exhibition is called Hōpua Whakaata, um, where in a rough translation is kind of like a reflecting pool. Um, it's an exhibition of Toei de Māori at the Polytech, so Māori students at the Polytech. Their wonderful art, um, which we're going to display to celebrate the Matariki, which is Opuaka Matariki, sorry, which is the Māori New Year. From copper wire sculptures to videos, photographs and paintings, a wide range of art from Māori students will be on offer. So there's lots of different kinds of art and it's all about celebrating, um, yeah, the success of Māori students in the arts. 18 students from the Polytechnic's Dunedin School of Art have submitted work for the show. Organisers hope it'll pave the way for more exhibitions with the Polytechnic in the future. We're really stoked that uh, Polytech is keen to do it with us um, and that we can show it here in the hub, uh, which is like a beautiful space to show work in. Fresh from a trip to the Netherlands, Ikare now wants to work with people who don't have access to art galleries and to bring the art to the people. And yeah, I'm just really excited about it, to be honest, because it's like... All of the work is so um, different and amazing and beautiful and it's really cool to be able to show like a diversity of Māori art um, from more traditional stuff right through to quite contemporary things. It's really great. The exhibition opens on Thursday night. Entry is free with pieces available to buy. In Dunedin, the South today. That's all for our news this Tuesday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. Kakite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.